being able to take notes is an important skill that students should have. Students are constantly confr uh, confronted by information. Uh, if they're doing their work properly, if students are studying effectively, they will be reading widely, they'll view materials, and it's important to capture that information in a restricted or a condensed format so that it may be accessed later. The student can look it up in a small notebook and it'll bring back into memory the full lecture or the full set of notes or it, it'll list out all the important features that was studied and it'll be in a short and concise format. And that's what we mean by good note taking. Now, if the lecture format is distinct, in other words, if the lecture format is broken up into parts, for example, if it was chronological, if it was done by date, so the lecturer was saying in this date something happened, in the, the next date something else happened, that's already partially done for the student. You can just make a note of the date and what happened, the next date and what happened. Unfortunately, information doesn't come that easy, generally speaking. Normally, we have to try and find out ourselves what is the best way to take notes. And in fact, in, in these short videos, I, I think I've got four videos on note taking, short ones, but different approaches to taking notes. And when you've looked at all of them, you can decide which one is best for you. Or, or perhaps you've got your own method that's even to you, it's even better than what I've got here, in which case that's good. But what we're keen to do here is to try and find a technique that will enable the student to bring back information, a lot of information, from very few words. Because in a lecture or in a class, you don't want to have to write down everything. Everything that's said, it's not necessary to write everything down, just write some essential points down. So the method here is, well, determine the categories to be covered in the lecture. So what's the lecture about? Set up a paper in advance with columns headed by these categories. So try to imagine what, what are the categories that are going to be mentioned. Sometimes you may not know this in advance, so it might be best just to go in with uh, a table with some columns in the table and you don't even know what the headings are but but you can do that when you get in there so you can say point one is about whatever and write down what the column heading is i've got an, uh, an illustration right at the end of these notes and i'll show it to you now which might help for example here this is a class on economics and this is a famous writer from the 1930s, John Maynard Keynes. And if we knew that it was about economics and we knew it was about the economics of the country, the what we call macroeconomics, if it's about that, we might want to have a column for dates, for people. And the person here is John Maynard Keynes. What's the event? Well, he published a famous book called The General Theory. Actually, it's called the general theory of employment, interest, and money, but you don't want all of that. The general theory is fine. And the significance. Uh, what happened? What did this book do? Why are we talking about it? Well, it influenced economic policy for whatever it is, 30 or 40 years. Some would say it's still around. It's still influencing policy. Now, we've got one set of categories here. So we've charted one um, event. There might be someone else, perhaps in 1945, at the end of the Second World War, someone else made a contribution. I'm not going to go through the names, but uh, someone perhaps in the 1960s might have come along or in the 1970s might have come along and said something else. Now we'll have a list of people what they published or what, where, how they became important and what they said, the significance one. The columns don't have to be the same width, make them the size you want, make the table to have 
hold maybe 10 of these events or whatever. So now you're capturing information and you're capturing it, capturing it in a very structured format. So let's go back to um, what I was saying earlier. Now this time, look at the advantages of that approach. Well, it helps to track conversation and dialogues that may otherwise be lost. So we know if someone mentions John Maynard Keynes, well, we could look it up. We could look it up on our little table and say, oh, yes, in 1936, he published that book and that became a very important book. We could add a lot more detail by adding extra columns. We could go into what was the book about? Why was it such a revolutionary book? But that's how many columns you want. Uh, I've just been on there at a bare minimum. But doing this it reduces the amount of writing. You don't have to write down everything the lecturer is saying and write down Keynes many times and the dates and write down the general theory of employment, interest and money or the general theory, the book. You don't have to do all of that. It's, it's already written in the notes once. You can now reference it. You can say Keynes 36. You can miss out those columns because you've got them already and you can just go to what's important. So it's a good way of making notes. It provides an easy preview mechanism for both memorization of facts and the study of comparisons and relationships. In one table, you've got a lot of information and it's easily accessed. The nice thing in the class, you don't have to write everything down, as I said. So you might have Keynes, John Maynard Keynes, you might have Milton Friedman, you might have Anna Schwartz, you might have lots of people uh, in different roles. But then if the lecturer suddenly says, oh, some further points on Keynes, well, you don't have to go back and write down Keynes in 1936 and the name of the book again. You've already done it. Just write Keynes. You've already got it covered once in one row. Now Keynes and go and say what he's what the lecturer is saying about Keynes. So it's a very clever way of taking notes. The disadvantages of this method. Well, I can't think of any. There might be some, but they evade me at the moment. And perhaps if you think of some, we could uh, chat about it in the seminars. Perhaps if you make a note of it and uh, Prove me wrong. So in the meantime, I'm sticking with no major disadvantages. Now, when should we use this? Well, it will focus on both facts and relationships. The fact is, in 1936, John Maynard Keynes wrote The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money, The General Theory, the book. That's a fact. And the relationship will... What was the relationship between that book and economic policy in the world, really, after 1945, after the war? Did Keynesian economics, was it influential in the world after the Second World War? So it's a good way. It, it focuses everything. It's all in a little table, as you've seen, but... Um, it, it does it does help in that way. It, it reduces the amount of time you've got to to write things down and edit and you don't have to duplicate information or duplicate words and sit in a class and write like crazy person. You don't have to do that. And besides which, of course, with our method of using videos, well, in our case, it doesn't really matter too much because you can always stop the video, rewind it, go back and do it again. So in the context of the way we do it at Galton College, this is not that important either. It's just a, a clever way, if you have to make notes, of making notes. So that's the reason why we mention it. The, the table itself can give a good overview of the whole course on one piece of paper. So even if you're watching a video, one of our videos, and 
and doing, let's say, macroeconomics with us, it's still good to have the, 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 the table. Let me put it back on the screen. There. It's good to have something like that. As I said, here I've got four columns. You could add maybe seven or eight columns. And now you've got, you've got almost a matrix of information in front of you, rows and columns. And that's clever. So that's one method of taking notes that I would recommend that you seriously consider. Um, but that's all we uh, need to deal with in, in this context. So let's leave this video and say thank you for watching it.